there, man. Um, all right, then, gaming pit uh, number five podcast. How's it going? Hope everyone's good. We are live. We are um, all sorts. King Killers in the chat already. What's up, bro? How's it going, man? You good? Uh, we're obviously live, and then it will go on to recording as well to YouTube. And this week we have the Montauk Project. Montauk, okay. So the Montauk Project, we're just going to dive straight into the deep end here because Mayhem has a Harry Potter four sized book of information for us. Um, and I thought I was good doing five pages. I was like, yeah, I got this. And he just rocks up with an absolute uh, repertoire there. So uh, I'm going to break it down and then I'm going to give you some sort of idea what's going on. Uh, Killer, how you doing, man? How's the family? Hope you're good. Nice to see you in here. Um, that's, that's too much blue on one screen. <laughs> you're too blue. I'm red. You're blue. You're blue? Sorry. We have some ambiance. <laughs> oh, we changed the green. Is that okay? Yeah, oh, that's a bit better. Do you like, how's that? 100% true. How are you doing? Uh, welcome to the chat. We've got a couple in there already. Uh, we're just going to kick off, and if you um, miss anything or whatever, it's always available on the actual channel itself. It's the newest channel. We had 50 episodes on my personal YouTube, but we decided to make a new one, etc. So here we go. Montauk Project, boys. If it sounds a bit of a weird name, um, you will recognize it. Stranger Things. If anyone's seen Stranger Things, You've heard of Stranger Things. It's so popular on Netflix. I think season four is coming uh, the next month or something. Um, yeah, it's that, basically. But great response, love heart. <laughs> there you go. Blue. Sorry, green. <laughs> uh, feeling blue, maybe. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Stranger Things, mind control, CIA experiments. Um, <laughs> that's very good, yeah. We might have to turn his mic up as well at some point or make sure that he's in, it's in the right direction. He's gone yeah. for the... Oh, he wanted to be like me. He's copying me. The, the up approach. That's it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like this. Right. <laughs> you don't have to see me. Right. So diving in, boys. Right. The Montauk Project is a conspiracy theory about government projects conducted at a place called Camp Hero. Uh, there's also on YouTube videos people going up to Camp Hero um, and having a look around. Um, I think you're allowed. <laughs> is it me or the no. British speakers? Sound incredible. Sounding smart is the key to this whole thing. Definitely. Yeah. And Mayhem's Irish, so when he starts to speak, you know, it will just plummet. But uh, slap in the face, that might. <laughs> um, so, Montauk, Camp Hero, Air Force Base, uh, New York, right? It's shut down. But if you look on YouTube, plenty of people have been there and to look around. So you get these adventure YouTubers. I've actually been to Camp Hero, and you can look around. It's a mental building. Uh, it's an old RAF base, and basically it's got a massive antenna at the top. But some real dodgy shit went down in there. So uh, if the name rings a bell, it's because of the popular Netflix show Stranger Things, all uh, based around this project. So this project was in the 80s, which is obviously where the Stranger Things pro um, show is based around that era. Um, stories have been circulating since, since the 1980s. And to quote, a guy called Preston B. Nichols, who was an electrical engineer at Montauk Air Force Base. Um, this is his words as well. Essentially, two projects, a mind control project where they influence the mind of man using electromagnetics and also developed or evolved into time travel end quote that was his exact words um so to set the scene for the secret time travel program that the cia was working all sounds a bit nuts doesn't it secret time travel programs strange if you've seen stranger things and they go to that place called the upside down go on man he added one more thing there was interdimensional travel as well yeah yeah, I've got some stuff on that as well later on. Oh, that, that's, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I reckon you've got some more in-depth stuff on about that. But I, I'm probably just like the icing on the cake. Mayhem is going to be the full cake. <laughs> no, not really, not really. I'm not You're missing out. a few slices, but most of the cake. <laughs> so uh, to set the scene for the secret time travel program, the CIA was working on you get into a room with a strange machine. So you go into a room, there's a strange machine. It's like sort of like a sci-fi show anyway. Um, because there's a there's a chair in there, and a young boy was strapped into the chair, scared but looking determined. He's wearing a skull cap that was all different wires hanging out of it. So it's sort of like a Star Trek sort of scene, and you know how they make up all the buttons and the lights on a spaceship uh, set. Uh, so they've got the big tower, it's all flashing lights. There's a lad strapped to a chair. It looks like an electric chair. He's got a skull cap on, uh, all lights flashing. He's got all different colored wires going into his brain and things like that. Uh, but it's all for good reason, maybe. Anything's probably not for good reason with the CIA, actually. But uh, once satisfied, the boy is secure. Two men in black suits and two scientists, they turn the machine on, and you can hear the hum of electricity. 
The boy looks scared and for the scientist to calm him down and says, just like we discussed, concentrate on the target and the date, September 4th, 1976. So the lad's strapped to a chair. He's about to do something sick. He's, he's got this uh, date and time focus in there. That's how they do it. He's focused on that point. Uh, the mind's eye and all that jazz. So the hum of the power grid um, grew so strong in the room that it was just absolutely unbearable. A blinding flash of light and the boy disappeared. Then a minute later, reappears, sweating and panting profusely. One of the men in black suits rush over and says, did you see him? Did you see the target? The boy uh, nods his head and with a quiet, exhausted voice, the boy says, yes, he was talking with a man about a submarine called Akula. Then the boy faints. These are the words um, of the, the men in black said after. Tell the president our operative successfully infiltrated Soviet space time. He didn't gather any useful intelligence, only confirmed that our field operatives know already. Uh, the Russians are building a big submarine, which was the code name Akula. So this boy apparently travelled there, saw the submarine, um, saw his target, and then come back. Have you heard about the same thing, Mayhem? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they used it, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. I'm yeah. telling it as, as if it's like a story for yeah. you, just to make it a bit easier in your brain. Allegedly, they used the chair for many purposes, like, you know, as you said. The, you know... It's like a uh, looking glass through the looking glass to see what to see the target to to apprehend any information and so on and they also use it for uh to travel as well you know so yeah, yeah we've got some more on that so great. yeah this is according to whistleblowers as well so they're according to whistleblowers that you know like um edward snowden and the nsa and all that stuff that's a whistleblower basically you work for these secret governments and then you once you know you, you bail and just pull the whole blow the whole project onto the public basically um using psychic children to reach out different uh, dimensions and apparently this is only the start they had actually successfully accomplished many things uh deep underground camp hero ran for 11 years two men needed hypnotherapy to recover from what they uh, experienced as children so um i'm not sure if i'm going to repeat myself here but what i remember from watching stuff about this um they needed hypnotherapy and when they was getting it like it sort of unlocked the the past memories for them so they were sort of brainwashed to forget it so they didn't remember their childhood or remember any of this stuff until, but they were traumatized by something but didn't know what so they go into this hypnotherapy and then it all starts coming back and they're having flashes of this chair and this room and stuff it must be like wow man like um it, i don't like for a second in my mind do not doubt for one second that the cia were 100 percent doing stuff to people to try and, and do this sort of like mind travel uh all this crazy stuff there's no way that they did not try this or apparently the project is still on running which doesn't surprise me either they would have just moved the place but um what yeah. if like you know they, they probably did that and legit yeah they're probably Camp not Hero even was... it's not even the only place probably it's probably all over the country it's crazy um 100 killer man yeah um right so <laughs> wow this is my favorite bit so listen to this the soviets could also do the same apparently so uh with with traveling to other dimensions so so they made the psychic warrior program that sounds sick i would have 100 been in the psychic warrior program man but like, what that like, job description like psychic warrior all right cool man <laughs> so um with american psychic soldiers training to mentally defeat enemy spies i have literally not a single clue on how the actual hell psychic warriors battle one another <laughs> mayhem you have go. you got anything else on that there's there's a good example the past two years the government has defeated us just uh, locking us up there you go sorted that's how it works you know we're just being deprogrammed. Uh, Hi, babe. Oh, she's not coming in. Yeah, oh. that, it's only two of us. She just decided not to join us at all. Like, you know. I know, yeah. She, she's bunch. like our um, middle of the match, middle of UFC. The girl comes in in a bikini with the, the scorecard or whatever, nine, round nine. She's like that for our podcast. She brings in all the punters. Yeah, uh, and she the, always has we the could have, We could have doubled the viewers right now, babe. Yeah she, yeah, she always has the wrong poster, like, you know. Yo, Roll, how's it going, man? You good? Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, they just come over in. to look at us. I know, yeah, yeah. Have you got anything on this uh, Psychic Warrior program then, Mayhem? No, not yet. Not yet. Not oh. yet. Why? Because you've just uh, basically, I don't know, you just highlighted it. Uh, yeah, I'm highlighting a lot of stuff. That's yeah. how I 
you know, I, I sort of go over things and then you just like, just do right. things. So, you I've know, only got... was... yeah, no, no, go keep going. You've only got, that's it. Yeah. So just go on, open your can. Get the... <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, this is, you're going to elaborate more, but we did the Phil Philadelphia experiment as well. And we've done it on this channel as well. <laughs> I've kind of ran late. Um, so the Philadelphia experiment is linked. Mayhem will go into that a bit more. Um, it's good because every time I've just done a little smidgen on a little subject of it, I can always put it over to Mayhem. So that's pretty good. Um, da -da 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 -da. They even used nuclear yeah, power generators. <laughs> so they used nuclear power generators to give the project more power. And, and right, so as well as um so then they're strapping children to chair that just imagine stranger things you, you you've got this visual now stranger things you're in a chair you've got a school cap on you've got wires and you're teleporting to so this guy uh time traveled this lad to 1976 to look at a, a black russian submarine called akula and then all of a sudden they needed more power to teleport people further so they put in nuclear power generators uh to make the project 10 times and they managed to teleport a man to deep space, apparently, says the whistleblowers. You know, take it how you will. Uh, and when he returned, he died shortly after because of the exposure to deep space. Um, you know, I'm just giving you the uh, the light version. Uh, and then Mayhem will give you the paid version. Uh, the craziest thing I read, though, this is by, this is just out there, man. The craziest thing I read was in 2012, President Obama himself was teleported to Mars, okay, to meet with an alien delegation running a cooperative research base um, with Americans there as well that worked alongside aliens because aliens had the hand in the project Montauk. This is ridiculous reading this um, because it was the alien technology we was using. Uh, if, Mayhem, anything on that? I couldn't right. say that with a straight face. Everything no, was kind of believable uh, until that point. Okay, so... Uh... There, if if you look at the internet and you you read books and there's a there's a Montauk uh, Chronicles, it's a two hour movie that was right. made and it was trying. It's not a documentary. It's, it's more like um, shit. It's it's more like um, half documentary, half a movie. You know, half a film that, that 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 tells the story. But we have to remember that it's all connected to Philadelphia Experiment, and it's like uh, you know, uh, Back to the Future shit. Yeah. Marty McFly gets into, you know, Rick and Morty goes in behind yeah. and there's a Star Wars flying over and the Star Trek helps everything. So this is how the... <laughs> it's so fucked up. If so it, Philadelphia comes... Experiment, we did that as well. Uh, we haven't done it on this channel. We did, um, what did we do? We did Admiral Bird. Uh, Philadelphia is on the other channel. That was, um, they teleported a whole warship um, and when it reappeared, uh, the crew that was on it was all mangled into the ship. It was all part of the ship, dead. Every every person came back dead, not a single survivor. Um, the People teleporter jumped hole. over the board and into the green fog, and they just reappeared in the bar. There was there, there's a story that uh, uh, two sailors or a couple of sailors they jumped over the board, and there was a when all started the green fog appeared. You yeah. know, so we have to make it as a horror movie, right? So I'm gonna be scared, you know, shitless after that anyway. <laughs> so. The green fog appears, you know, they turn on the generator in the, in, in the, in the engineer room in, 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 the, in uh, underneath the ship tip. And what happens there is they jump over and there's a story that a couple of them, a couple of seamen, uh, I said that. Oh, it gets me every time. I'm 33, man. Yeah. A couple <laughs> of sailors, they appeared in a pub somewhere and they got in a fight and then they just reappeared on the ship after all like so you know things things happen strangely but there is a person that's connected to it oh yeah his name is yeah his name is al Bilic. have you heard of al Bilic? no i haven't right so apparently Bilic is the man that watched philadelphia experiment in 1988 right i want to get it right so he didn't remember anything apparently his past life it was under a different name and so on but it's so fucked up. You have to, you just have oh, to get the around, right? So apparently, uh, he was an engineer, electrical engineer on uh, on USS Eldridge. Okay. So, uh, and he was uh, he was the part of that Philadelphia experiment. And remember, the Navy was trying to make the uh, the ship uh, not not able to be detected by uh, by any enemy raiders. 
So that was that was the point of it. So what happened during the Philip experiment? Uh, basically, the ship disappeared. They appeared, reappeared in a different place. Uh, the CIA, U.S. Navy, they, the U.S. Navy, they just said no. It just took off from one place and reappeared again because you know of the time frame and nothing happened. So he claims to have been one of the actual sailors who were below decks in the control room operating generators which powered the the USS Eldridge altogether. He doesn't remember that until 1988, when he sits down, opens the can of beer, right, and watches Philadelphia Experiment. It's not the 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 one, the newest one. Then you can you can watch on on rent. It's just like a, it's not a B movie. It's 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 a lower class of Hollywood movie. Bollywood, there's a bunch of Indians yeah, doing it, I wouldn't call it. <laughs> <laughs> on the ship. <laughs> so, yeah, and and he sees that, and and his memory is unlocked. So Babe just put, his memories came flooding back. He learned that his name was Al uh, Bielik or whatever. After all, born uh, Edward Cameron, apparently. Exactly. Ed Cameron. Remember the, the surname Cameron because we're going to go to a, to a different person, right? So he passed away uh, in 2011, age 84. He's actually, he's actually, he's actually, his memories are written down and he, he never changed his story. Until, until he never changed his story. He died just saying the same thing. So, is it true? Well, we'll find out. So the, the story. He's an electrical engineer. He does his stuff for months of project. And <clears throat> another person. It's a Stuart Swedlow. Stuart Swedlow is one of the boys from the Montauk project. Allegedly, Albiel claims there was around ten thousand boys. They took part in this Montauk project. They were strapped in the chair. They were they were taking part in experiments, and around one percent of them survived. And then, one percent of that one percent was able to live a normal life after all. That's messed up. That number, that number by more people is being multiplied by ten. So basically, ten thousand to hundred thousand kids disappeared altogether. So well. When they were strapped in the chair, apparently, allegedly, when they were doing those experiments, some of them didn't survive in the first test, first run. The body uh, exploded, got the fried yeah, I can't imagine why. You've got this skull cap yeah. on metal onto your skin. Exactly. With wires. So they weren't able. They're in foot nose. And you, it's just planning normal electricity. And then you're hooked up to it. You, personally, are hooked up to a nuclear generator. Yeah. And, um, what I'll be like, says, that just before he got teleported from 1943 to 1988, yeah. or maybe his consciousness was, was basically transported from one to another. Babe says again, uh, he'd been de-aged, had his memory wiped, and had been forced to live out the rest of his life as Al Bielik uh, is what it says. De-aged. Don't know, don't know. How's that possible? Like, you know? That's crazy. It's what 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 is they're trying to explain is that they weren't operating just moving the bodies around it's just uh, your own consciousness like your own soul was traveling through time uh, or being transported to one place to another so basically if you were uh, if i was sitting in a chair and i thought about you or beep i would be inside beep you know and easy and target wouldn't even know <laughs> about it so basically the soul or consciousness was just replaced with me that's 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 what they're trying to um to explain by by those videos and the books and, uh and so the what they said is um uh so everybody has this ability apparently everyone has the um psychic slash telekinesis power in them but it's stronger in some people than it is other people and they were using the strongest ones that could move like sort of the matrix like bend a spoon move a table a little millimeter them sort of people they were using for these psychic warrior programs and things like that it's Kids, boys. Yeah, yeah. Especially. Uh, hence the stranger things, used. all the kids there. Yeah, boys. But 11 is a girl. So that's, that's you know, I had to change it. You know, the, originally the, the, the creators of Stranger Things, they wanted to name it Montauk. Just Montauk. You but know? it was copyrighted and or something wanted, somewhere. Yeah, they wanted to, to place it in New York as well, like on uh, the, the same place the camp here was. Yeah. Yes, you know. Man, they but, could have as well. The abandoned place, that would have been mental if they'd have done it there. Yeah. and shit. they they think there's some underground tunnels there as well like but so, recent uh, geological uh survey said that there's impossible because it the area the area of camp hero is like you know the gla glacier is just 
spits everything out and that's just the leftovers and the glacier just pukes everything out it's just the sand you know crushed ground and all that stuff just well together so they're saying it's impossible to have underground tunnels there because, that um you know, that preston nichols um come out afterwards he wrote books uh and all sorts he um he went proper public and mental about it but oh yeah all of them did he got uh seriously discredited and nothing proven true and just absolutely shot down but uh it's either he's full of shit or obviously if it's the government involved they would shut something like that down you can't just you know not yeah he says this, but the government are the government. They control everything. That's true. Go, 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 government, government tells you something, and it's always a different thing anyway. Yeah. Uh, so Preston Nichols, he was an electrical engineer. He worked with Bielik. Uh, he claims that through hypnosis and brainwashing, he was made to forget that he was living at a double life. Uh, right? So yeah, that, that's, life that's what I'm day. saying about the uh, hypnosis and things like that. Yeah. So by day, apparently he was a, you know, the the not well-mannered engineer, nobody liked him. And by night, he participated in some strangest experiments, which as one could imagine. That's what he says. He claims to have used a modified version of the old Montauk Raider on the duress to generate an updated Philadelphia experiment for exceeding, you know, numero uno altogether. Mm. But that's Preston Nichols. So he, Preston Nichols, he's, he's, we'll come back to him whenever we're closing the whole project, because uh, Stranger Things, they have the beast. Yeah, in the Upside the Down. project, Come Hero has this beast as well. Yes, that's... How did allegedly. I not come across that? Allegedly. I already thought so, that. As soon as I said Stranger Things, I thought, shit, man. <laughs> There's going to yeah. be some mad monster in there. Duncan Cameron. A brother of Ed Cameron. Okay. Right? He was one of the central figures, so he was one of those boys with powers. So he could sit, he was sat in the chair, and he could, at the very end, he was one of the main ones. He was actually the leader, not the leader, but he was the boy to go to. And he was actually doing all the stuff. He experimented with the travels. He, uh, apparently, he uh, landed like a on superhero. Mars. Lander. He was, he was, he was, he trans, he transported himself to Mars. His consciousness was transported to Mars, and he could see back in time. But what we spotted, I'll tell you later. So, according so to instead Bielik, of his whole body disappearing, he's just his yes. mind was going places. Just his mind appearing in some other form on on, on the other planet, you know. So <laughs> that's how far they apparently that's how far they end, they, they ended. So according to Bielik, so we know that Duncan Cameron is one of the central figures, the main man, the numero uno, el persona importante. So according to Bielik, he was his brother while he was at Cameron who jumped off the USS Eldridge and landed in the future, allegedly both were uh, sent back to Eldridge to destroy the equipment that was keeping the ship in the hyperspace. So, wow. hyperspace. They're, 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 they, they, they come to the point when they open the portal or they create a hyperspace when they travel through it or, you know, that's, it's like the starting point. It's like the it's loading It's like being game. inside the Hadron yeah. Collider. Yeah, so it's like you have a screen with loading games. So Duncan Cameron is sitting in the chair. He's connected to to everything, and he creates the something appears, right? And they're they're going through. And so at some stage he was uh, he was creating the portals, and the uh, you know you could see the other people on the other side, and they were waving at them, and he could wave at them, and that those portals were sent back in the future, sent sent back for. They were sent in the future. He could see in the future. So you have to stand in the portal opens. You're walking by Tesco and the portal opens and something waves to you. What are you going to do? You're going to fucking run. <laughs> but people in, in, in the future, they were just waving back. So what they decided, they were sending away teams up. And sometimes he had to keep that portal open for so long so that the away team could cross it. It wasn't like, a, you know, you're going through and you appear at the, at, at the, uh, at the other side straight away. So what happened? That portal it was a middle point. like thirty meters long, right? For That's... the travel, you could feel, like, yeah. yeah, you could feel like a thirty meters. So he has to keep that open until away team or one person goes through. What happens is sometimes it closes before the team, and they, they get stuck in the the nether. So they just get yeah, middle, it, 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 yeah, in ether. So they're just gone. 
and we don't know what happened. So that's why the claims are there that they're from 100,000, 10,000. I suppose 100, if you're in the middle, other portals are opening up here, there, and everywhere all the time. You could just jump through one, but where would you end up? Yeah. But how did they get to it? That's MK Ultra shit for you. Oh, uh, so how yeah, obviously, um, MK Ultra and things like that. Yeah. And the Stargate, right. So I haven't got nothing wrote down. So the top of my head, Stargate program. Uh, was the same thing. They used these people, like I was saying, they picked the strong people with the strong psychic connection that could move stuff with their minds and shit just a little bit. Um, they picked them to be part of this Stargate program and they actually had it where they ended up with a group of uh, 10 people or so that sat in a room and it was their job to predict outcomes slash um, uh, things like world events, like problems and stuff like that. And they were also linked to all of the other government agencies, CIA, NSA, uh, FBI, and all that stuff that would call on them for their help if they got stuck on something. They could use their psychic abilities. But they spent 38, 40 million on this Stargate project. Um, and it shut down. They opened up somewhere else. Um, they used these people, but it was only right 15% of the time. These people could, in their mind, um, they actually was successful on one mission. And I think it was locating an aircraft or a ship or something. Uh, and they located the ship within two miles of what the exact coordinates they just said in their mind, which was crazy. But there was only right 15% of the time. So it was sort of worked, it sort of didn't, and then they scrapped the project. That was a Stargate program, so you can look at that. That's all in with this stuff as well. So they actually had a team of psychics trying to solve um, the agency's, well, America's problems. Or look, the, by, by, by Project Stargate, you, Stargate Project, you, you, they were using a device to do it. Yeah. So they were using the device, very similar the chair. to the one you see on the Stargate movie. Yeah. To Not amplify the their... Amplify. It like so, X-Men. Xavier. Yeah, Xavier. He goes he into his room and, and it amplifies his, his... That shit. He sits inside a massive golf ball, puts his little helmet on, and then... It amplifies his thing, powers. Well, how did it get to it? How did they get to that? Oh shit! So it, yeah, it baffles me. Be... Like yeah, all right, they've got this device that sits on your head, but how the fuck? Right. right. So it it was the aliens. <laughs> there is a theory. There is a theory. There is a theory that at the same moment the the USS Eldridge disappears, there's this, a shining object that disappears with it. Okay. There's a shining object flying over that disappears with it. And what happens is that object's been transferred to uh, the beginning of the Montauk Project timeline. And it's, it, it crashes somewhere, okay? And they recover it, and they create the chair from parts. Of the it's like reverse, Yeah, it's like reverse engineering, so they reverse. They, uh, apparently, they have four of those chairs at some stage. It's, uh, it's we, we're gonna, a big shit. Yeah, we're, go we're going <laughs> to get... We're gonna, we're going to get into it, but they created and they amplified. There, there are some stories that they're actually, there were gray men, the grays, helping them all together. You know, remember that EBE-1? We were talking about it. Rings uh, a bell. In EBE-1 is, the, is the, the extraterrestrial that actually survived the crash. Right, and they had yep. him locked up. And they, there was a yes. movie, there, it's on YouTube as well, like, that you can, you can see, and he talks about it. And, and the question he's asked is, where are you from? I'm from Earth. But, but, but why? How? No, I'm from the future. Uh, or I'm next. I'm you, but I'm evolved into me. That's a long but, fucking time. Yeah, it's a long, long time. And they asked him what happens. What happened with humans? Oh, you killed each other in nuclear war, which probably is going to start soon. Yeah, anyway. that's probably like next and year. That's how it happens. And they, they, some, you know, the survivors are there. It takes thousand years to evolve, and people remember what happened, and they don't want to happen again. And, you know, and he says, but he dies. But before he dies, he gives them, he gives them some uh, instructions on how to create certain stuff. But that's just, that's just, we're talking about conspiracy theories now here. So that's just uh, one of the theories that happened. And there's another, another theory that there were actually greys there that were helping them why the chair was uh, stuff. But let's go back. This is a really dark part of the story at the moment because they had those boys and the boys were uh, either kidnapped uh and other ones they were basically just the orphans or the homeless ones yeah. they were just picked up from the street and they were just testing those boys for abilities he, there was a game 
uh, I can't remember the name of the person that there was a card game that was that was the, uh, developed by a, by a, one of the one of the psychologists or, or psychiatrists, and it, you had one part of those cards marked with the cross, circle, triangle, and stuff like that, and the other card, you know, it, like I'm showing, is it's nine of clubs, yeah, it's nine of clubs. So the other person couldn't, the boy couldn't see it, but he says, I'm looking at that card and there's a black circle, but you can't see it. So to you tell me, what is it? And that boy was getting into the, without even knowing what he was doing, he was getting into uh, the, 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 the hand, they weren't even called handlers, just the instructors, instructors mind. And he says, yeah, that's it. So once they pass a certain threshold, they were accepted to the program. That's and the crazy. boys didn't know what was going on. Yeah, the boys didn't know what was going on. So you had a certain levels of programming. So the first level was, uh, I don't know, they didn't let them, you know, the MK Lutra, they, they put the dog in front of them and they, sh you know, you shoot it, you know, just to get the motions over and, and stuff like that. But they were basically holding them under the water as long as they were, they were basically out of bread and they said they give up and they were just lifting them up, putting them back into, into the, Dark rooms, you know, tighten them up with the very, you know, with the cuffs or or anything else. You know, the guys were bleeding, they were beaten, uh, raped. Oh shit! You know, on 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 and stuff like that. But then they were stepping into those rooms, and the 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 punishment or or those torches were getting worse and worse. And they were getting to the last room when the person, and I think it was one of the main men of the of the Montauk on the Cam Hero. I think his name was Jack. I can't remember the surname of. And he was the man that was saying, come on, I'm here. So he was cutting, he was unchaining them. He was cutting the ropes. And he says, here, I need to help you. But you're not going to be going through that again. But I need you to do something. And they were told that they were going to do stuff to protect the country. Save the world, no like superheroes. Yeah, yeah so the, you, you, because no one else can do it. So yeah, the guys were sitting on the chair, and as I said, one percent of those lads survived. I mean, survived, but then another one percent of them. I could be wrong with the numbers, but I'm trying to get, paint a picture here. How many of them were actually able to live normal life after that? So they were yeah, deprogrammed. There's no way. So back in the, back in your head, that yeah, was just I don't think they would happened. though, man. If I think they deprogrammed the ones that didn't work. If any, if any, the ones that didn't work, the ones that didn't work, they just got rid of the body. Oh yeah, I guess so. But if they did work, uh, move the project, like to send them to another project. They would not. That's got to be the amount of money they spend. Uh, now it doesn't matter whether you're a child or you have a life or a soul. You are now property of the government. You are an asset. You are whatever money they've put into it. They're not going to let you go that easily. They're going to get the use out of it. But I think the deprogramming thing is, I don't know. It's nearly sort of a. Uh, a Jason Bourne sort of situation, you know, where just complete mind wash. Um, but it, it, if they turn or anything like that, then yeah, they get assassinated. But um, they they tried to get Jason Bourne back for so long because of the amount of money they spent on on uh, mind control and programming, and that was just through on like. On the other hand, on the, yeah, you, you're correct there, hundred percent. But on the other hand, they could only use boys to a certain age. So what are they going to do with those boys? After? Why is that? Because their psychic ability was their abilities, strongest. You know, uh, there somebody I've heard. That, if they go funny. missing when they're a boy, they're not going to miss them when they're an adult. So put them out the yeah. Right, yeah. Somebody said a very interesting thing uh, on one of the podcasts I was listening to. Yes, I do listen to podcasts. So, so wow, the, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the pe one of the people said that. We are born with all the information in the world, and we're just uh, being taught how to forget it. You know, we're just forgetting it when we're getting older, and that's why we go into school, and that's why we learn the shit. Is again. that the remembering uh, your past life stuff? Could be. Have you seen um, Infinite with Mark Wahlberg? No, not yet. On Amazon. Do you know what it is? Yeah. So this is a very, 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 very small percentage of people remember their past lives. So, mm -hmm. but they can't remember remembering their past lives. They just know how to do shit. So Mark Wahlberg is one of these zero zero point zero zero one percent of people, and he's he's it's in the twentieth century, whatever it's twenty twenty one, whatever. Uh, he makes this absolutely perfect one of a kind samurai sword, just makes it himself. Don't know how he's done it. He just makes it. He wants to sell it because he's after some money, uh, and they're like, "Wow, like how the fuck did you make that?" And he's he used to be a blacksmith in 
fucking 1280 AD or something like that, you know, yeah. uh, a Japanese blacksmith. And he's remembered. And eventually when you remember, it all comes back. And the things you can do, the, the fighting, the everything you can do, you, you remember everything. So, But it's a, such a small percentage of the human race that tried to do it. I, I don't know if that's even a thing. There has been, obviously, very weird cases of children saying, oh, like, I remember that house, and that's where the dog was, and that's the, where the tree swing was, and they remember specifically, never been there in their lives, they were probably about six-year-old, they take them, the parents sometimes on a whim, just take them to this place, it does exist, and then they tell you exactly where something is, and it's fucking weird, but their kids do remember their past life, it has yeah, been happened, like. Do you remember dying in, in the airplane crash on Pearl Harbor, like? Yeah, stuff like that, yeah, legit, yeah. And so, like yeah, it, it, exactly where tree swings was and things like stuff's buried and they dig stuff up. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, Ow. it is very interesting the idea that you're born with knowing everything. Yeah. And you know, and basically that's what happens. But there is there is a story about a UFO and when when I mentioned that. But let's jump. Let's jump to so the EBE. I have the um I have little thing on the uh on the EBE which I already said. Right, so there's a I'll be like remembers one thing, right? That they they actually they were keep telling him and he did he input into his project? We don't know. So he says the humans are born, or I should say not only born, but at the time of conception, as he found out with his research, with their own time locks. Okay. Now, would you have to go into some rather obscure physics? I leave it out to math and try to make it simple. We're not living in a three-dimensional universe. We're living in five-dimensional universe. The fourth and fifth dimensions are time. The fourth time dimension, of course, has been well alluded to be a clown as, as you know, by Einstein and others. So that's, 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 how they, uh, that's how they go through it. So the fifth dimensional concept actually goes back to 1931. And... <clears throat> Da, 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 da. He realized, as is known today by some physicists, that the fifth dimension is also time. It is a spinor or a vector rotating around the first primary vector, which indicates the flow and direction of time. Get your head around it. I've been trying. You That's explain work, science please. to me now. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It's, we trust science. You know that. <laughs> so the flow is. We can't fill it, right? So we say that we are moving forward in time. That's because of our looking at it and our reference. We don't sense time, but it does flow at a fairly stable rate. And this other vector running around is no concern to us normally. So what they were trying to do, they were trying to work a way around it, mm -hmm. just to move ourselves around that four, fifth, fourth and fifth dimension. But <clears throat> I mentioned... I mentioned the boys and, and the hard times they've gone through. And the main person that goes through is, is Duncan. So Duncan, Duncan gets on that chair. This is Professor Xavier of the group, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he is the one, yeah. But he's, he's going to, to that stage that he doesn't need the chair anymore. That he can do it himself without the chair. Mm. So the first that we're trying to open the... Oh, that's the crazy. To look... Yeah, the, the, the first they're trying to open the particles to look through it. And they describe, at some stage, they describe that the boys that didn't make it, some of the bodies were burned. Uh, the, some of them just could shit themselves, you know. Uh, they exploded, the heads exploded, the heads stayed there, and the body just got burned. Imagine being uh, a scientist or whatever on that. That, that. This Preston Nichols guy was just an electrician there. Are you fucking see a child? Electrical engineer, yeah. Electrical engineer, and a child fucking explodes in front of you. There were... The, there was a question by Al Bielik, uh on one of the movies. I suppose it's like the guys that work at Area 51, though. They're just normal people. They're, they're signed by confidentiality. Sign here, sign here, sign here. 38 more times. And if you say, oh, we'll kill your family. All right. It is, it, it is a, bit, a bit fucked up, like, but... Now, you know, before, before we jump into anything else, is, is the, uh, the place that the camp hero is on, the build on. Okay. Oh, yeah, so... It's got to be like an ancient Indian it. burial ground or something. Exactly. No, it's not actually, but it belonged to... Uh, it belonged to Indians, uh, you know. Always does. Yeah. Always does. 
Uh, it is it legit? It's, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, spiritual land, um, dark energy places. Like there must be something on the scales or the readings or EMFs or something there that, that they're, they're attracted to. Why would they do it there? Like, yeah. So it's been the Montauk Indians. They were they were they were living in that region, and apparently they were living there for at least. That the, they were living there for at least eight thousand years before the camp here was, yeah. and before that was taken from them. Yeah. So it's a very noteworthy to point out that chiefs of the Montauks have held the name of Pharaoh, like the Egyptians ones. Oh, okay. Right, their history long before any white people had arrived to impart such a name to them. You know, they wouldn't teach them, so they already knew that. So the, the theory is there that there are certain points on Earth that are connected, interconnected to each other. So yeah, the, the some, pyramids, the, the we have pyramids yeah. Yeah, we yeah. have that. And then one of them was, was, was wherever the Montauk's lands was there, was the camp here, where it's situated on one of those. Either that on the Brookhaven, which is back towards the, towards the New York, you know. As we know, the, the Brookhaven is on Long Island. Yes. Uh, you wouldn't put the skyscrapers there because of the ground. Uh, it's like, as I said, it's like a glacier just pukes each other, each, each out, you know, it just, just creates that land. So you, it's not, it's not like the mountains. Like a volcano you know, goes up underwater. It's like, yeah, it's not like the Chinese mountains when you have those, those tunnels built, you know, with the, with the, with the special, with the four air forces and. and That's so the Stargate. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the evidence indicates that we're there for at least 8,000 years before the white men came. That's crazy, man. That's crazy, right? So it, it is geologically distinct from Long Island and North America. It could theoretically be a remnant of the Atlant Atlantin Atlantis uh, yeah. altogether. Yeah. And the name Pharaoh was most likely derived from Atlantis, both in Egypt and Montauk. Holy shit! So that's that's one of the one of one of the one of the theories. Like so. Well, that's weird because actually Stargate had a show called Atlantis as well where they did underwater Stargate. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, when, we, when I said we do a Montauk project, I said, Yeah, I have everything scripted, but you can't. You can't because, because it's so I'm... all over the shop. You've gone from ancient Indians to burial grounds to pyramids to space to time travel to different dimensions to yeah. light speed. Oh, <laughs> no wonder them yeah. kids' heads exploded. <laughs> Mine feels like yeah. it's going to. Exactly. Exactly. So let's go. Let's go to uh, the project itself, right? So the experiments. Stuff. Yeah, the experiments. They're probably asleep already there, right? Yeah. But the experiments. The experiments began in the early 1970s. Yeah. So the facility was expanded to as many as 12 levels and several hundred workers. I kind of, the the crews that are going over there are trying to investigate. They see all the hatches being sealed off or or just flooded. And there's a cement, they're cemented over. You can't even enter anything bar. I think you can only enter the, the tower itself. Yeah. When the people enter the tower, uh, there's a shaft going down. You it's can't. basically an elevator. Just fill a con can concrete. It, but it can't go down there. So they filled the whole whole all of it with concrete. Yeah. So oh, shit. It, how 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 far did it go? This sort of oh, preserved yeah. though, saying that you could get a team to dig all that through that. Yeah. So it says homeless people were abducted and subjected. So let's just sum it up before we go even further, right? So homeless people, uh, orphans, the kids were, oh, were, yeah. were abducted and sub subjected to a huge amount of electromagnetic radiation. Only a few survived. So, you know, I think few survived to remember what happened there. Yeah. And we have those tumors right over there. People had their psychic abilities enhanced to the point where they could materialize objects out of thin air. Stuart Swedlow claims to have been involved in the Montauk project, and the result, he says, his psionic faculties were boosted, but at the cost of emotional instability, post-traumatic stress disorder, and other issues. Yeah. So it's basically like a kid being raped all the time. Yeah. That's how it is. Like, but that's what happened, allegedly happened to them. They were, they were waterboarded. You know, I don't know why there. they had to go through all that. MK Ultra. Yeah, I mean, they used uh, MK Ultra was LSD stone. and uh, acid and things like that, wasn't it? Mind control with LSD. But that was given yeah, to like but... thousands, just the general population. 
want it like, go and see your doctor today and sign this and we'll put you up we'll give you money for stuff want it and people yeah. will go into these places and they will pay to take lsd and apparently charles manson and all that sort of stuff was linked to mk ultra and is the reason why he is how he is and he had a fucking cult as well so how well did that go now listen to this a portal in time was created which allowed researchers to travel anywhere in time or space there was developed into a stable time tunnel so at the very end the time tunnel was opened oh, shit. right now just a reminder uh two days ago or yesterday the hydrogen collider has been restarted after three years okay at 10 a.m i think it was the 23rd of march at the 10 a.m did you feel anything I don't feel did anything. Feel that wave? Did you feel that wave going through you? No, but like, that, reality is changing. like that guy that stuck his head in the Russia's one. I think it was. <laughs> I remember that one. Yep. Just a beam of light, and he's it, it, just like, zoom. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> like he lived, man. I don't know how. I think he's still alive now, but he got like cancer and shit. But now they're saying that the contact was made with alien extraterrestrials through the time tunnel. And technology was exchanged with them, which enhanced the project. This allowed broader access to hyperspace. So this is the hi hyperspace they're talking about. So it's oh, creating that's crazy. Man. Yeah, but yeah, hi crazy. The, the hyperspace and ports and stuff. So, but why are they still like making spaceships and like trying to get to Mars and stuff if they could simply just walk through a door there? Is that all for the? Is that all a facade for the general population to say we haven't advanced as far as we have? Look how long it took him to give the internet to the public. Yeah. <laughs> what was it, like 10 years or something? Yeah. So, and they thought that no one's going to use it. They're going to have like 100 websites and it's just going to die. And yeah, I know. Yeah. Now gonna... look at it. Yeah. Fuck them, you know? Now it's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> just scroll Twitter for 10 minutes. <laughs> You'll realize. Yeah. Fuck them. And mayhem, mayhem, mayhem. Yeah. 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 <laughs> mayhem shorts. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Now, this is the one from Stranger Things. An alien monster traveled through the time tunnel and destroyed equipment and devoured researchers. The tunnel was mm. shut down and the creature was destroyed. So we know the end of it. Okay. But we don't know who summoned it. Wait, how did they destroy it, man? Like, I imagined immediately it was sort of Ghostbuster guns, like lightning guns and shit. Holy yeah. crap. So mind control experiments were conducted on runaway boys, were abducted and brought out the base. They were underwent excruciating periods of both physical and mental torture in order to break their minds. Then their minds were reprogrammed. So that's what you do. You break your mind. So you do what you're told. And you won't say no. That seems right, doesn't it? Yeah, if man. You want somebody to do stuff for you because whatever way they were doing, that wasn't just, uh, you know, stocking up the shelves in Tesco. There was some other shit, like a proper shit they were doing. So, Beep just put, just reading uh, how true I don't know, but whilst Duncan was in the chair, someone whispered the time is now to him, and that was what let loose the monster from his subconscious. Ah, fuck off, Beep. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Beep, you get fucked. <laughs> nah, you're fucked, yeah. Yeah, that's how it happened. So, as, as I mentioned, Beep just destroyed the whole show for us anyway. Oh, um, shit. <laughs> I wanted to build up that excitement for you guys just to go in, don't fall asleep, you know, get you on the proper frequency and, and listen to the story. But what happens there? Yes, the true. So let's go back in time a bit. So Duncan, Ca Duncan Cameron is the one, the one, the numero uno there. So, so he does everything for them. So at some stage he was, they were, they were trying to materialize objects he was thinking of. Right. I don't read me what Beep says there. I don't want to hear. I don't want to talk to her. She's I can block her if you want. Moment. No, you're right. I'm not. <laughs> So the Duncan, Duncan Cameron, he says, oh, it's like, uh, shit, I don't know. Think, think, of, think of a peach, right? Mm. Okay, he's thinking of a peach. But what happens there, he managed to get think that of... peach travel in time as well. So that peach octopus. has already appeared yeah. in the canteen. Somebody picked it up, right? And he's eating that, right? And he's <laughs> but... walking into the room with the Duncan lad yeah. sitting there in the chair. And he says, the, the people are asking him, so what, what did you think of? And he says, I thought about peach and I put it in a canteen and the man just eats the peach. What, what did you say? <laughs> oh, shit. So, you know, this is how far they go. So I'm kind of. What happened to Duncan then? 
I'm trying to stray away. He's, he's, he's there. He's, you know, I don't know. Is he still alive? I never, he, I never gone as far. He was just it. a lad, wasn't he? He was Ele- just a lad. 11... The, the one that he was, they, they picked him up because he was the most advanced. He has the, the, the psychic abilities. Was, yeah, was was, the force was were, strong in everybody him. Everybody has it. Yeah. yeah. Everybody has it. Have you heard of, of, the, of, the, of the earth frequency? No. Um, 7 point something uh, megahertz. Oh, yeah, very yeah, little. Earth, right? mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very little. And you know the bees, the way they're flying, because the, um, the bees are heavier. They're, they're impossible for them to fly with the little wings they have. Like a T-Rex's arms, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's like a T-Rex <laughs> arms. You know where the T-Rex died because, you know, they couldn't maintain the, their, their proper, uh, you know, toothbrush uh, routine, you know? <laughs> they uh, couldn't whack themselves. Uh, that's what but, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. They were too stressed, like, you know? But, <laughs> but you know you know the bees, like, you know, they have little Little, little wings, wings big-ass body. Hear, yeah. yeah. You can hear that bzzz. Yeah. So apparently the inside would be is, is a bit empty, so they create a little uh, vacuum chamber inside, sort of thing. Vacuum and, then, and that, that frequency they create, which we can hear, lets them fly. It's Earth's up and down, frequency. Up and down, yeah? That's Project Phoenix. Phoenix oh, Project, are you there, buddy? But, that's crazy uh, stuff. So okay. you mentioned the you mentioned the warriors, right? The psychic warrior so, program. So sick. Yeah. <laughs> So Preston, Preston worked with Al Bilic on the psychic aspect of the Montag chair and the Montag boys program. Yeah. Preston trained the Montag boys to be Psy warriors. Yeah, that's cool. There was special alien technology chair outfit. They, they mention it all the time, alien, alien technology. Yeah. I'm kind of trying to strain away. I think maybe, maybe you never know. Yeah, is, man, it, 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 it's very light. short-lived. If, they, if we did have alien contact, it was very like yeah. brief or... That is still in secret or whatever. What gets me is Russia had the same thing going, and they had both had psychic warriors, and they're both creating portals to each other's secret places. But you know, like you said, there was a thirty meters. You go through a portal, and there's this space, and you go into it, and it's like a Mortal Kombat room, and there's a Russian psychedelic warrior in there, and an American U.S. Navy SEAL Delta fucking psychic warrior, and they just start fucking now fight. And then the winner gets to go through the portal, man. <laughs> Three, two, one, five. Yeah, cool. yeah, like that. Yeah, and it's just, a, it's just, but they're doing it with their mind and stuff as well, and throwing stuff from their mind, like, zoom, like, ah, oh, that's sick. But it, it was What's definitely your talk, no. dear gay. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, okay. just street fire like sort of shit. But that psychic yeah. warrior program. How does one train for it? To defend against tax attacks on the mind how do you strengthen the mind is that is that the beating and the torturing to have a strong mind i think that the power of the mind is stronger than the bullet at some stage because what can they do with the with a flock of people like you know what Just like program them by anything 10 of these it's... people psychics yeah mm. because obviously so, they're, they're like boosting their powers with generators and then jet nuclear generators and shit that's <laughs> crazy right the montauk chair a little bit on it right mm. i have some bits you've already said them but do it again that was ages ago no it's never hours ago <laughs> <laughs> i've already forgot what i said <laughs> so they're saying there was a special alien technology but yeah. uh that's when Obama went were, to mars outfitted with coils there were pickup electromagnetic signals representing the thoughts of the person occupying the chair these signals were then highly amplified and rebroadcast by the transmitter, where they generated physical manifestations in a region of space. The Montauk chair used subtle quantum fields to read a person's thought. And there are pictures of those devices and their drawings on how to use it. The device also, translate, the device also translated the electromagnetic field or aura around the body into a visible format. It's the weird. Chair was used that, it, the, yeah. it, it's a chair. I can't get... How does the chair produce quantum fields through a thing? That's how. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, yeah. It, it. Listen, we're only learning about the stuff they've done during the Cold War. You would have thought it'd have been like rays in a room that admit some sort of laser, a beam, or. Uh, I'll tell you now. Something like I'll that. I'll tell you now. Because a chair a is just bank of radio receivers. Yeah, but listen to uh, this a bank of radio receivers designed uh, okay. by Tesla. 
Nikolai would pick up, yeah, would pick up and digitize the thought, turning thought into computer code. Uh. The radar tower was used to turn thought into reality. This is the so guy that, that created the earthquake machine. Mm. So what, the chair was used for many purposes. One was to open up a vortex for time travel. Many, many boys were lost. As I told you, they were lost into the hyperspace. So just That's on. See ya. Yeah. yeah. No tombstone for you. Bye. They used uh, the computer, which is called Cray-1 or IBM 360. Back in the day. Don't fall asleep, Sai. Si. No, I'm um, just... Uh, uh, IBM, yeah. Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles. Yeah. <laughs> or, or the bank. <laughs> <laughs> so, they had the, had the chair to, to, for the remote view window one you described. They had mm. the chair for the, uh, the, the time travel. Uh, looking glass, you know, to, to, to see what's happening. And uh, to create an object of nowhere. So... Quick, th quick things, right? So what happens is they're, they're doing that, their projects and they're doing experiments for my drink now. But at some stage, they were, they were going to teleport from, uh, from one place to another and they decided to go to Mars. So one of the boys, I think it was Duncan Cameron. But like, so you just said their subconscious just goes. Yeah, and I was trying to... So that's to... why, that like, don't you think to put on an astronaut suit anyway maybe in case you just end up on mars as a full person yeah like that guy that went because apparently if they did send the guy to space and he come back and he died yeah you would have thought they'd have prepared a little bit more because people were disappearing from this chair allegedly it wasn't just their mind it was their whole self it's 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 you have to just read read through it watch again read through it again to understand what was really going on but what happens, he's getting uh, teleported to Mars. But then he gets himself traveled through time. And he goes back time 150,000 years back. And he sees those mega cities being built and being, sorry, being destroyed, being built up, you know, like built up and uh, so... civilization being there. So in the movie, in the movie. Did it have an atmosphere uh, or was it just like sort of yes. peak? Okay. Yes. So in the movie, in the movie a Monster Chronicles, there's a scene just before the monster is released. Is the 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 main man Jack, the the you know the the the, the camp the camp boss says, if we only knew that we weren't here from the first time. Boom. So what he's trying to say is that. Apparently, we could have been, you know, just 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 appeared from the from the other planet, being moved, basically. Uh, and now we, we want to move back. Yeah, but the funny thing is that uh, the 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 Duncan the Duncan lad, right? He's going, and he's at one stage he's being trans he transports himself to uh, two thousand seven hundred twenty seven thirty something, and he uh, and he's he stays there for a while. Yeah. And he and after two weeks he's been vetted by people and the people welcome him right and apparently those people know hello we you know we you we knew you, you were coming. coming yeah you were coming we heard about the stuff yeah stay over here you know the culture is here everybody welcoming and he's becoming a guide there or or some kind of stuff and he just comes back at some stage just has so two weeks crazy. away and comes back yeah like... two weeks away yeah Shit. how does it all end so we're not going into technical details of it. How it is all end. At some stage, Duncan Duncan has been exploited too much. He doesn't have need that charity to use it. He's been asked to do so much stuff. And at some stage, uh, Preston. Ah, like you said, where the place was built on top of all this, like it could have been dark energy slash uh, radio waves, etc. It, it and he could do it now at will. So they didn't need that location anymore. Is that why they abandoned Camp Hero? I don't know if they're still using it. And they just moved him. Yeah. yeah, they're still using it's it now. Question. Well, you said something about Obama, didn't you? Well, there's a thing. There's a YouTuber, right? Well, Obama it... care didn't work for for USA, so what the fuck? Yeah, right? some and people went to Camp Hero and they was doing the vlogs or whatever and doing the tour and having a look at Camp Hero, and they actually managed to get uh, an interview with a caretaker. But when they went there to pick him up, 
the boss was there and he was refusing for this person to go into the car yeah. and say anything. Uh, and he was like, so they managed to secretly get him in anyway, and he had to duck and get past, and his boss was like, he goes, I'm just a caretaker anyway, and, and everyone was, and all of a sudden there was cars there, and there was just people concerned, he was like, don't say anything to these people, yeah, yeah or you'll lose your job and shit, basically. He's yeah, like, and he was what? actually there all the time, so they had to meet him at some stage. He was just in... a caretaker, like, but he's obviously yeah, he's seen some shit. And, and that's still going now. He's just, no, I, I can do whatever the fuck Because you can I legit can walk down that road. It's obviously fenced off, but you can see the building. You can see the big antenna on the top. And legit, some weird CIA child torture chair futuristic stuff did happen there in the 80s. And obviously it's still going now, which is mental. But then what happens to this Duncan guy? Just Professor Xavier sat somewhere, just controlling shit, just nipping into the future. The fuck? <laughs> it's yeah. mental to think about. You but, can't. It's a fucking science fiction film, man. You want to hear about the Beast? Ooh. <laughs> Unleash the Beast, man. Go on. So, how the, the, the movie, the Monster Chronicles, uh, it actually creates all the story about it, how that Beast appears. Okay. So This is the uh, same they thing get... that they're doing on Stranger Things, then. So yeah. this is all done by well, whistleblowers Stranger things and shit. You have, uh, Stranger Things, you have the, Upside uh, down. The, the water chamber. Okay, yeah, but you still have the Beast you don't there, have don't the chair. you? Yeah, you don't have a chair. You have the the water. Oh, tank. I remember. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, I only see a few episodes of season one. I haven't actually seen all the whole thing. Uh, I've seen bits and bobs. Uh, my son's watched the mm. whole thing. So very, but very, very interesting. Eleven, yeah, shaved dead. She comes out in like the the nighty thing. But yeah, I've seen her in the water chamber, and that like amplifies the um the sort of uh, powers and shit. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. So you know, Duncan is there. He's doing his job. The the the. But in the, by the August 12th, the 1983, the, everything was just walking perfect. Yeah. But Duncan at some stage has, has enough. And in the movie, it's shown as the, the uh, Preston, Duncan, and Bielek, they're just saying to Duncan, uh, the t- talking to themselves. Yeah, the how, how, how is this Preston Nichols so involved? Is it just because he's whistleblowing the whole thing? He is. After all, he's one of those four, four people we're getting information from. Mm. You know, at the very end, he tells all the story, and the the story. He was just the electrical guy. Yeah, the the stories do. He was close to the main man Jack there, the Nichols were lad. Okay. He knew what was going on, and at the very very uh, at the culmination point, he actually does something to stop the the the, the shit going, the getting in even further. Like so. So at that time. The portal is is working. They're they're doing the experiment, they're sending away teams from one place to another. Uh, they're it's like you know that portal is strange and things. You have that little vagina there that you put your hand in. The there. slit in the yeah yeah yeah. You slit in there and it's working. They have everything's working. They send away teams. They're they're gathering information and so on and so on. So working past, future, past, future, more future than than so over. At some stage, I think he was transported to six thousand or something. Six thousand AD. Wow. Oh, God, I don't know. Yeah. So, they decided to crash the project. So, while sitting in the mounted chair, Duncan unleashed a giant beast from his subconscious. So, he thought of something. It was like a hairy beast or something, right? That, yeah. Which literally Lots of arms, big project. blob, basically. Oh, yeah. So, the story goes that this giant, hairy, monstrous beast, referred to by Preston as a junior. <laughs> so, they already had the plan. So, they told Duncan... Uh, they, they they told Duncan what to think of, not what to think of. But I said it's lucky you want my mind strapped to that machine, mate, because everyone yeah. just get attacked by a massive vagina or something. I swear, <laughs> with arms and shit. No, the only thing, the only thing I'll be attacked is by massive boobs. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have to capture them and put. Them yeah, <laughs> She's coming, coming at us. <laughs> There's another one. Look at the nipple. This escalated so quickly. <laughs> If you strap a, um, yeah, maybe we should go have a sit in the chair and see what we can do. No, but what, what would what would Beep think about it? If she's still in the chat? Yeah, she's you know? still there. Oh, she put old man. Imagine, yeah. And King Killer was like, "Yes, please." <laughs> to the boob monster. Uh, yeah, fuck, man. You wouldn't even you wouldn't even have any thought if you were strapped to his chair. Someone put it on your head, and they said, uh, "Think of something." You would be so on the spot. Who knows what you would think of at the time? Yeah, Any, I'll, I'll... anything would be. You can't. You, you you'd be planning. You'd be like, right, I want this to uh, a mountain of gold, a mountain of gold, a mountain of gold. Put on your head, hairy penis. Fuck, and then ah oh, shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he... oh. 
<laughs> Anything could happen, man, but that'd be great. Don't add water to it. Don't add water to yeah. it. <laughs> well, it's good because the New York is so close. There wasn't mafia involved in it, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, they probably, like, <laughs> protected the, the, Why are you talking to me? You talking to me? <laughs> Ooh, babe. Oh. But let's go back to it. So he was formed from a thought form right out from the ether, out of ether, right? The beast allegedly ran amok all over the base. And the only way the person could bring the old ear to the hold was to disconnect the power to the raider. When that didn't work, they pressed, there's a scene that Preston, Preston Nichols is, is actually talking to the Jackman. The Jackman says, you need to go down there. You need to melt the the some kind of electrical shit and you just destroy it and he says no i'm not going to do it because that can attack me anytime oh yeah there's a, there's a smoke coming from the places all the cameras are being filled with the smoke and all he has to do is maybe go uh, basically just go there but he doesn't want to now they're armed they're wearing they're they're armed all the time so the jack lad takes out the gun and he says you're going to go there because I'm going to drop you down. I'm going to drop you right down. And then Preston Nichols is on his knees. Right? And he has hand on the trigger. And he's ready to pull out his gun out. But he doesn't. He decides to go. So he goes. He crawls through the, through the tunnel. And, and he crawls out under the smoke. And just goes to that panel. He melts it down. And, and in the movie, he's, he's destroying that with a uh, with hammer. Yeah. And everything just disappears. Are they using legit names in the movie? Uh, yes, okay. yes, it's like part documentary, part movie because you have those mm. scenes. Uh, they're explaining Stuart Stuart Swedlow's history. As a boy, he used to see the the plane, uh, sorry, the the UFO crashing in his uh, neighborhood, and okay. he's being taken not by a UFO, but he's taken by the some guys later on. He's being kidnapped, and he's, he's that'd be good to, one um, of those... yeah. to do a gaming pit thing, sort of where we put a movie on like of that sort of nature document. Uh, documentary slash film, and we just put it on and share the screen and watch it. That'd be fucking cool. Yeah. But I didn't know there was a movie on it. If you'd have messaged me, I'd have much rather watched a movie than. There is, yeah, it's on Bitchu. There Broke are two parts. Stuff. Yeah, there's there's two the parts. And actually, uh, watch the first part. Uh, How long is it? A week ago, it's a two hour one. Uh, the first part I watched a week ago, just before we wanted to. Uh, I never heard of that movie before. Ah. And uh, so you looked uh, into one it. One of the. One of the research I done has just mentioned that, and I said, "Oh shit, I need to find it." And it's actually on Beach in two parts. You can watch it. Um, I think the Weekend Warrior channel has it on. And uh, just just stick on it. I'll try to put uh, some some information into the comments on the audio, guys, for you. Sai is gonna do it on 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 video yep. because he's already falling asleep. No. Nope. But this is how it ends. This is straight in things, guys. And it's just been it's just it. been shut down. It's just been shut down. So, Babe, when you said, does no one know what happened to Duncan, I thought you were just going to uh, Google it and tell us all. And you just put oof. So if you wanted oof. to Google and tell us all, that'd be great. <laughs> now, there is a, there is an abstract from the book which talks about aliens over there, right? So I'm just, if you have time, I'm going to read it out. Go. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm good, man. And yeah, then, and then, guys, you, you, you think, but you, it, it doesn't have me convinced that much. Okay, I'm trying to think that we are maybe able to do stuff with Tesla and stuff like that. So, um, so all four men, the Bielik, Swerdlow, Preston Nichols, and Duncan Cameron, claim to have seen extraterrestrials while the underground camp, uh, hero facility, where there were quite a number of aliens at Montauk, said Bielik. Somewhere there on the same semi-permanent basis, a lot of them were just visitors. They came and looked at what they wanted to see and went back home. Mm -hmm. So you know when you remember the the nuclear tests, there were spot UFOs spotted over, and then you, there was a remember the case we were talking about the the all the equipment in the on the base just started flashing. There was ready to go, and everything yeah, just yeah. stopped. Yeah, yeah. Remember that one? Yeah, yeah. So there were little greys there. Which I suspect that were degenerated humans from the future. Large grey aliens with our different species were also of Montauk and they were highly intelligent. There were definitely alien be beings at Montauk, Nichols said. We had the little greys and the larger greys as well as a variety of reptilian beings. So oh. this is where they have me as that. Uh, okay. This is not the center of the earth, uh, reptilians, yeah. is it? Guys, 
there's I, I I have my set thoughts on flat Earth and I have my set thoughts on reptilians. But if they appear to be true, I'm gonna say yes, I was wrong. Okay. Didn't want anything to do with me because they couldn't reach me telepathically. When I entered the room, they would leave, so they couldn't get that connection between the, each other. Mm. So there are pictures of, you know, of them at some stage. I don't know if you can see it. You probably won't because the screen is white. But there are pictures of them, and they look like the the ones we can see on the movies. The the greys, you know, they have on the t-shirt with the eyes. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the egghead. Um, yeah, yeah. Paul. So the experiments were completed and the destruction of the facility was completed. It was claimed that the facility was closed for good. All the staff were brainwashed, mm. shot, wow. or sworn to absolute secrecy. And all <laughs> records destroyed. So you were either deprogrammed or you were shot. Make your choice. <laughs> yeah. It's Mad like white boy, get dead. You, yeah, the guy comes over to you. So, so for you, sir, today we have four starters. You're going to be brainwashed. If it doesn't work, you're going to get shot. And we're it's just like, going to skip the dessert. Don't even mind, white me, man. Just take me out for a few drinks. I don't remember yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, so... They were trying people to get in there. They thought it was a skate park, you know, to use the, the cements, you know, constructions and stuff like that. But this is the history of Montauk Project. Man. And it goes further to Brookhaven. And it goes further to Phoenix Project as well. And it goes back to Harp. And it goes uh, to, it's connected to Philadelphia Experiment. And it's it, connected to Alistair Crowley as well at some stage. Oh, man. It goes deep, man. It's like the tree's oh. roots. Just, just it expanding oh, all over. That was awesome. That, that, I cut that, I cut that in, in small pieces, guys, for you, because there's more to it. It's uh, uh, whenever Duncan Cameron was going to Mars, he went to see those pyramids. On Mars, you know, we have pyramids. Apparently, we have those. Uh, we won't see them because they never show us. Yeah, but at some stage, we could have seen them. So it was yeah. transferred there. And then how it all works. So, shit, I don't know. Life is good. Boy, that was crazy. That was crazy, guys. So, that is the Montauk Project. That was Podcast 5. Um, I don't even know how long that went on for. Uh, one hour and fifteen. We did well because I, I felt like fucking three hours in there. But when oh, we could it, be, we it, could be going for ten. Now, it, it? it just sees uh, just when me and Mayhem are just back and forth. Well, I usually start and then Mayhem usually finish. I do fifteen minutes. He's on the hour. Uh, but yeah, damn. When we get into it, it's good. That's just so good. And it's just sat there. We're just recording. We it's just bam, 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 bam. as well. Like that, yeah, yeah. yeah. We had vagina in it. We didn't have a dick jokes because Beep is not here. No, no, no. That's what we was missing. We was missing the eye candy. That's why we only had three people watching. Uh, but you know, she can rectify that. She can uh, rectify that next week. Uh, it was fucking interesting. Thanks, Killer Man. You stayed for the whole thing. Appreciate you, man. Actually sick. Beep, thanks for coming. That was sick. Uh, we had some other guy at the start as well. If you're still watching, thanks for watching. Um. Yeah, we're gonna end that there. That was the Montauk project. We'll be back in two weeks with I don't know what. So not next Friday, but the You're Friday after. Yeah, but I'll be trickling uh content all through the week. Um, in the way of shorts, highlights, and the full podcast will be tomorrow. Um, and yeah, apart from that, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, folks are watching as well, streamers, uh, viewers, people, and I'll catch you next one. Thanks, guys. Bye. Yeah, Dunzo. Oh, boy.